Welcome everyone to the first part of our quincentennial proclamation and awarding of the arts competition at Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. We will begin with mass by Father Carlos Macatanga, celebrated at Crystal Ray Parish in Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Good afternoon, my dear brothers and sisters. Today, we celebrate this Mass of Thanksgiving as we sign the quincentennial proclamation at Dufferin Peel Catholic District, District School Board of our 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. It was a labor of love. It was a mission inspired by love. And so what we have to continue is to proclaim God's love not only for us Filipinos, but for all of God's people. And so we gather here today to thank God for the gift of His love. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, we now pause for a moment of silence and ask God for his pardon and mercy for the times we have failed to love God, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. You are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children sanctified by penance. And in your kindness, grant those who steer to a sense of devotion a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Word.
reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought in. So they brought those men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, O Sadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods, and you do not worship the golden statue that I have set up? Now if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, drum, an entire musical ensemble, to fall down and worship the statue that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this manner. If our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, O king, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was so filled with rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that his face was distorted. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times more than was customary and ordered some of the strongest guards in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to throw them into the furnace of blazing fire. The young men walked around in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace and made the inside of the furnace as though a moist wind were whistling through it. The fire did not touch them at all and caused them no pain or distress. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up quickly he said to his counselors, Was it not three men that we threw bound into the fire? They answered the king, True, O king. He replied, But I see four men unbound, walking in the middle of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the fourth has the appearance of a god. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the door of the furnace of blazing fire and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Come here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. And the satraps, the prefects, the governors, and the king's counselors gathered together and saw that the fire had not had any power over the bodies of those men. The hair of air their heads was not singed, their tunics was not harmed, and not even the smell of fire came from them. Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, God of our ancestors, and blessed is your glorious and holy name. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, and to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. 
Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, and be, to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne unto the cherubim. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven to be sung and glorified forever. Glory and praise forever. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to john glory to you O lord jesus said to the jews who had believed in him if you continue in my word you are truly my disciples and you will know the truth and the truth will make you free they answered him we are descendants of abraham and have never been slaves to anyone what do you mean by saying, you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, yet you look for an opportunity to kill me, because there is no place in you for my word. I declare what I have seen in the Father's presence. As for you, you should do what you have heard from the Father. They answered him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would be doing what Abraham did. But now you are trying to kill me. A man who has, sold, who has told you the truth that I heard from God. This is not what Abraham did. You are indeed doing what your father does. They said to him, We are not illegitimate children. We have one father, God himself. And Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. Uh, in a special way, I'd like to welcome to this Eucharistic celebration uh, the Honorable Orontes Castro, our Consul General of the Philippines here in Toronto, and of course, Madame Luz del Rosario, Vice Chair and Trustee, Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, and all the members of the school board, and everyone celebrating with us the uh, signing of the Consentennial Proclamation of the 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. For my reflection today, this Wednesday, the fifth week of Lent, I just want to point out some attitudes that I hope all Filipinos will continue and will practice 
during this Jubilee year, the celebration of 500 years of the Christian faith in the Philippines. First is from the Colossians. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. That's why we celebrate the Eucharist, the highest form of thanksgiving for us children of God. What a better way to start the, the year-long celebration but with the Eucharist, listening to the Word of God and receiving the body of Christ. This is our faith, and that is why we thank God for the most precious gift of our faith, our relationship with God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And so we welcome you in our Thanksgiving celebration. The second is from the Acts of the Apostles. And this is when people were trying, especially the religious officials, were trying to stop the disciples, the apostles, from proclaiming the word. So now I tell you, have nothing to do with these men and let them go. For if this endeavor or this activity is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. And I hope we find the conviction about our faith in this passage from Acts. 500 years, we have been through a lot. Many people, many leaders, many historical events have tried to suppress the Catholic Church in the Philippines, have tried to silence the voice of the Church, destroy our faith, question our faith. Look, after 500 years, we're still standing strong. No man can ever destroy the Church, especially the way we celebrate our faith, because this is of God. No man will be able to destroy this faith. That's, like, that's why from the Acts of the Apostles, if it is of human origin, it will destroy itself. But if it comes from God, you will not be able to destroy them. I hope after 500 years, we are convinced now more than ever that indeed we worship the one true God. That's why we're still here after 500 years. We can only thank God, not only for giving us the gift, but for continuous presence in our lives, polishing, uh, helping us, nourishing this gift that we may share the gift given to us. In the Gospel of St. Luke, uh, chapter 6, it says, A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. After 500 years, I think it's a good time for us to reflect the quality of our faith, the quality of our relationship with God. And this we learn and we will know through constant prayer, good and sound catechism, of course, through the Catholic schools, uh, the religious piety, the religious celebration. We need to understand fully our faith. You cannot give what you do not have. And you cannot proclaim what you do not understand. I know there are many issues about the history of the arrival of the Christian faith in the Philippines. People would use discovery. Of course, there are many questions, and I think the debate continues. You cannot change what happened in history, but you can correct the details of what happened. Like in the Philippines, I think the debate continues where the first mass was held. It's true that the first mass was celebrated. It's historical. But where it was celebrated, it remains a historical question. But it doesn't matter. The point is, when Ferdinand Magellan, a Portuguese explorer, came to the Philippines, people, histori historians said they discovered. How could you discover somebody that was already there or something that was already there? They encountered people, the first inhabitants of the island. And so it was not a discovery. It was an encounter. The Asian people and the West. It was a great encounter probably inspired by God for, so that the Christian faith may be implanted or planted in the islands. 
the first name that was given to the country was Archipelago of St. Lazarus. The, because the first mass, the gospel, was the raising of Lazarus. But the name that's like in each one of us is the name Filipinas, uh, in honor of the king of Spain, Philip, who financed and supported this great expedition. We cannot change history, but we should learn from history. There's a question about the conversion, sword, or the faith. That's that already happened. What we can do is to correct the mistakes of the past in the present so that we don't commit the same mistakes. We should learn from the lesson of history. And this is the challenge to all of us, Filipinos, whether in the Philippines or in the, the diaspora, that we should be authentic, joyful witnesses of the faith so that we will bear good fruits. For example, huh? even here in Canada, even here in my parish, especially among the Filipinos. But this is not just among the Filipinos. This is, I think, in different cultures. Uh, on a Sunday, where are you going? Or where have you been? Well, I've been to a baptism. Really? Where? Mandarin. Since when do they celebrate baptism in Mandarin? But of course, they think of baptism, but they went to a reception, not to the celebration of the sacrament. But because for us Filipinos, the faith has already permeated in all aspects of our lives. When it comes to the sacrament, no matter where it is, it is about our faith. And I think it is a good time for us to really go back to a good catechism so that we may understand what we celebrate and we may share what we understand. So it's a good time for us to reflect that we may continue to bear good fruits. In the Gospel of St. Matthew, it's the great proclamation, Go therefore! and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. That's why my reflection is, after 500 years, the mission continues. Because this is the mission given to us, baptized. We are all missionaries by virtue of our baptism. And so no matter where we are, we need to continue to fulfill that mission. Our mission is the mission of Christ. For our life is the life of Christ. After 500 years, we need to continue to proclaim that mission. The word and the work of Christ. What do we have to proclaim? Tell the world of God's love. That's the famous theme of World Youth Day 1995. And I think it's still the histo history of World Youth Day, the, goddess, the, the largest gathering of young people all over the world, almost 5 million, with St. John Paul II in Luneta. Tell the world of God's love, but you cannot tell the world of God's love if you are not joyful, if you are not faithful. And so the challenge for us is, as we go and proclaim, whether it's our home, it's our own family in our country, or in the diaspora here in Canada, be joyful missionary of God's love. In the Gospel of St. John, but I have a testimony greater than John's, John the Baptist. The works that the Father gave me to accomplish these works that I perform testify on my behalf that the Father has sent me. And the Gospel says, and the truth will set you free. For we find the truth in the word and in the word of Jesus. And so how do we proclaim the mission? How do we continue the mission and proclaim the love of God? By what we say and do, just like Jesus. He proclaimed the truth in his words and in his action. May we continue to follow his example. Be joyful witnesses in what you say and do. And finally, as you... Not this one. Ah, that, that's true. And as you go... Make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. Without cost, you have received. Without cost, you are to give. That's why the theme for this great celebration is gifted to give. We have received a most precious gift. What we do with this gift is to share it with others. My dear brothers and sisters, this is not just a cause for celebration. It's also a, cause, a reason and a time for us to reflect and to deeper our relationship with our God.
who has been faithful to us yesterday, today, and tomorrow. May our Filipino saints, San Lorenzo Ruiz and San Pedro Calungsod, intercede for us that no matter where we are, may we give and share what we have received to continue as joyful missionary disciples of the word in what we say and do. Today, we give thanks to God. I now invite everyone to please stand and we offer our prayers. The earth has yielded its fruit, for God has blessed us generously. As we remember to thank God for many gifts we have received, especially the gift of the Christian faith. Let us ask God's blessing upon us in these prayers. that the church may be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the message of salvation to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. For all world leaders, that they may promote righteousness in their governments and be zealous in eradicating evils in the societies they are sworn to serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For all Filipinos working and living overseas, that through the intercession of San Lorenzo Ruiz and San Pedro Calungsod, may they continue to be joyful witnesses of the Christian faith in what they say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For the healing of the sick, the feeding of the hungry, and the consolation of the afflicted, that they may know the deliverance of our God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. For the peace of those who have died, especially those who have died during the pandemic, that they may celebrate the love of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, graciously hear us. The Filipinos are known as un pueblo amante de Maria, and so we ask our Blessed Mother to intercede on our behalf as we now pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the liturgy of the Eucharist.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for a good and a good of all his holy church. Receive back, O Lord, the sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you. Sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we when proclaim we, your death. O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in the saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very spirit, who takes away everything that stranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Thomas our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, San Lorenzo Ruiz, San Pedro Calungsod, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare 
to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine, that they may purge all evil from our heart, 
and strengthen us with eternal protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Attend, Almighty God, to the prayers of your people, and as you endow them with confident hope in your compassion, let them feel as ever the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. We will now proceed with the official program proper. And as always, we'd like to acknowledge that the land on which we are holding our celebration today is the sacred territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, and we thank them for being stewards of this land. I invite you to please stand for the national anthem.
I now call on Father Carlos to do the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, we give you thanks for gathering us here today to celebrate the gift of the Christian faith you have given the Filipino people 500 years ago. You have accompanied us through the years, in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, with your love and mercy. May our celebration of this quincentennial give us the result to become joyful missionary disciples of the Christian faith anywhere in the world, instruments of your healing and hope, especially during this pandemic. May San Lorenzo Ruiz and San Pedro Calungsod intercede for us as we fulfill the mission you have entrusted us. We ask this in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this point, we would like to show a brief video of the history of Christianity in the Philippines. Salamat Panginoon sa iyong punla Misyon kaloob sa aming puso Aming sarili ay aming handog Laging tapat at laging tugon Naririto handa kami Panginoon Kami ahayo sa iba't ibang dako Hatid ang iyong salita at paglilingkod Inang Maria ang siyang gabay na mitlugod Lalaganap alam ng iyong misyon Limang daang taong biyaya Salamat Panginoon sa iyong pula Misyon sa aming puso Aming sarili ay aming handog Laging tapat at laging tukon Naririto handa kami Panginoon Ang mga kaloob na aming alay sa mundo Katarungan, kabanalan, kapayapaan sa senyal na ito maniwala ang mundo Pagmamahal namin sa bawat tao Ibang daang taong biyaya Salamat, salamat Panginoon Ibang daang taong Biyaya. Salamat Panginoon sa iyong punya Misyong kaloob sa aming puso Aming sarili ay aming handog Laging tapat at laging tugon Naririto handa kami Panginoon Naririto Handa kami, Panginoon. Before the 
grand horizon. Five hundred years of faith, grateful today. We bear the gift of mission. Totally yours, we give ourselves faithfully yours until the end. To, to your mission, Lord, we give our yes. I now introduce our first speaker, Chair of the Board of Trustees at Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, Ms. Sharon Hoban. Thank you, and on behalf of the Board of Trustees of the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, it is an honor and a pleasure to bring greetings and to be part of this wonderful quintenary celebration event. Moreover, I am gratified to know that so many of our Dufferin Peel students have taken such a keen interest in showcasing their talents as part of this celebration. I think this speaks to the strength of the faith formation that takes place daily in our schools, but sometimes it gets lost or taken for granted in the turbulent times we find ourselves in. I'm reminded of the words of our Holy Father, Pope Francis, who said, Dear young people, do not bury your talents, the gifts that God has given to you. Do not be afraid to dream of great things. To the people of the Republic of the Philippines, I congratulate you for your enduring faith and for being a beacon of Christianity for 500 years. To our young people, thank you for your gifts and for carrying the torch of our faith wherever you go. Thank you. 
It is now my great pleasure to introduce to you Dr. Marianne Maserato, who is our Director of Education for the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. Thank you, Chair Hoban, for those uplifting words. On behalf of Executive Council and the Senior Management Team of the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, I am so very pleased to bring you greetings and offer congratulations to Consul General Castro and all those who are tuning into this broadcast of our quincentennial proclamation and launch event. Pope John Paul II said, remember the past with gratitude, live the present with enthusiasm, look forward to the future with confidence. As we celebrate the significant milestone of the quincentennial of the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines, these words certainly resonate with me and I hope with you as well. We are ever so grateful for our ongoing relationship with the Filipino community in Dufferin Peel and for entrusting us with the care and education of your children. My personal thanks to Consul General Castro for allowing us to be part of this wonderful celebration and for all of the Dufferin Peel students, families, and teachers who have personalized the event for us. Thank you and may God continue to bless you. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, Trustee for Mississauga Wards 6 and 11, and herself a daughter of the Philippines, Ms. Luz Del Rosario. Philippine Consul General Mr. Orentes Castro, Chair of the Board of Trustees of Dublin Peel Catholic District School Board, Ms. Sharon Hoban, Director of Education for Dublin Peel Catholic District School Board, Dr. Marian Maserato, Father Carlos Macataga, to all our distinguished guests and Kababayans across Canada and the world, joining us in our virtual celebration of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines. Welcome. Good day. Magandang araw sa inyong lahat. My name is Luz Del Rosario, and I'm Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees of the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board and Trustee for Mississauga Wards 6 and 11. 2021 is a milestone year for all the Christians in the Philippines, and notwithstanding the current pandemic, one in which we have much to celebrate. Research shows that Philippines has the third highest Catholic population of any country in the world, and Filipinos are known universally for their Catholic faith and devotion. Father Chris from National Shrine of the Divine Mercy in Massachusetts mentioned in his homily on Friday, March 5th, that God is using the Filipino people to continue fanning the spark of faith around the world. Filipinos suffered a lot during World War II in the hands of the Japanese, but no nation remained more Catholic than the Filipino people. As we celebrate this 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines, let us continue to find the spark or the flame for the greatest gift of Catholic faith. On March 14, 2021, Pope Francis celebrated a Mass at St. Peter's Basilica to commemorate 500 years of Christianity in the Philippines. According to Pope Francis, this will be an opportunity to increase the virtues of faith, hope, and charity. I truly believe that as we struggle through the pandemic, these virtues are the ones we live by. Faith, we continue to have faith with God during these difficult times. Hope, we continue to hope that there's, there is a light at the end of the tunnel with vaccines becoming available. Charity and kindness. We all have seen people spreading kindness and charity by delivering food and necessities to the needy, to our seniors who live alone and to the homeless. I want to thank our frontline workers in long-term care homes and hospitals, first responders and other essential workers for all they do in caring for the sick. I would also thank all teachers, administrators, and custodial staff who ensure our students are safe to attend schools. 
With this 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines celebration, I am very happy, as are my fellow trustees, that the Philippine Council General of Toronto reached out to the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board to become part of the celebration by proclaiming the event and launching the art competition for all of our students. The competition ended on February 16, 2021. Students responded very well to the art competition challenge. I am very proud of the 71 talented students who participated and very thankful to the teachers for their encouragement and guidance as the students prepared their artwork. I also thank the students' parents for their support of their child's participation to this competition. The students not only submitted drawings or paintings, they also had to do some research of the Philippines to meet the theme of Paghilom at Pagasa Mula sa Pandemia, or Healing and Hope from Pandemic. In a few minutes, we will be announcing the winners, so please sit tight. At our board meeting on September 29, 2020, trustees unanimously voted to approve the proclamation of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines, as well as the art competition. I would like to take this opportunity to thank my colleagues and fellow trustees for their support in making this proclamation a reality. Please indulge me as I call out their names, starting with our chair, Sharon Hobbit, Mrs. Aga Trustee for Wards 2 and 8, Trustee Mario Pascucci, Mrs. Aga Trustee for Wards 1 and 3, Trustee Bria Corbett, Mrs. Aga Trustee for Wards 9 and 10, Trustee Stefano Pascucci, Trustee for Ward 4, Trustee Thomas Thomas, Mrs. Aga Trustee for Ward 5. Trustee Bruno Anika, Mrs. Aga Trustee for Ward 7. Trustee Anna Da Silva, Brampton Trustee for Wards 1, 3, and 4. Trustee Daryl De Souza, Brampton Trustee for Wards 2, 5, and 6. Trustee Sean Xavier, Brampton Trustee for Ward 7 to 10. And Trustee Frank De Cusola, Caledon Dufferin Trustee. I also would like to thank our Senior Executive Council, headed by our Director of Education, Dr. Mariam Maserato, for their guidance and support in putting this event together. I close by repeating Father Chris's comment, let us all continue fanning the spark of faith around the world. Thank you and God bless you always. Mabuhay ang Filipinas. Our next speaker is Mr. Orentes Castro, the Consul General at the Philippine Consulate General in Toronto, Canada. Prior to his assignment in Toronto, Mr. Castro served as Deputy Consul General at the Philippine Consulate General in Chicago, USA. He also served as Consul at the Philippine Consulate General in New York. Mr. Castro is a recipient of two presidential awards, Presidential Medal of Merit and the Mabini Award, Rank for Commander, for acts of merit and for his distinguished service in promoting the interest and enhancing the prestige of the Republic of the Philippines. Please help me welcome Consul General Castro. Good day to you all. Please uh, allow me uh, to greet my fellow Filipinos. Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat. I am pleased to extend our greetings and sincere gratitude to you all joining us on this historic quincentennial commemorations in the Philippines with the theme, Victory and Humanity. 500 years ago, the first Europeans set foot in the Philippines when Portuguese explorer Ferdinand Magellan arrived in Omonhon Island in the province of Eastern Samar, Philippines. He and his Spanish companions 
in the voyage met for the first time our ancestors who had a flourishing civilization and culture. It was significant as it was the Filipinos' contribution to the first circumnavigation of the world. From the victory of Lapu-Lapu to the celebration of the first mass in the island of Limasawa, and the kindness and humanity extended by Filipinos to the first Europeans who set foot in the Philippines. And through the centuries, the Philippines has evolved into a vibrant country of more than 100 million Filipinos, including the estimated 1 million Filipinos living in and calling Canada as their second home. We express our utmost gratitude to the officials of the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, namely Chair Sharon Hobin, Vice Chair Filipina Canadian Luz de Rosario, and Director of Education Dr. Marian Masurato for graciously accepting the Philippine Consulate General's request for partnership on Centro Results Pandayon Art Competition together with the Toronto Catholic District School Board and with the support of the Philippine National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Padayon is a Visayan word for meaning to move on or to carry on. I am pleased to report that of the 182 total submitted artwork entries, the students from the DPCDSB run schools submitted total of 71 artworks, with 47 from the elementary school and 24 from the secondary school. A total of 33 schools participated in the competition 21 elementary and 13 secondary schools. The theme of the art competition is Paghilom at Pag-asa mula sa pandemia or healing and hope from the pandemic. Congratulations to the student winners, participants, and their parents who took part in the art competition from 19 November 2020 last year to 16 February this year. I would like to convey our sincere thanks to the Board of Trustees of the Dapirin Peel Catholic District School Board for the approval and signing today of the proclamation on the 500th anniversary of the arrival of Christianity in the Philippines. As a token of our utmost appreciation to the DCPDSB, the Philippine Consulate General is donating the facsimile copies of the two novels titled No Limitangere and Hel Filibusterismo, authored by Dr. Jose Perizal, the national hero of the Philippines. The two novels provided a critic of the Philippine society and played an important role in raising the sense of nationalism among the Filipinos. Before I close, um, uh, this is a surprise uh, to our officials, uh, to our friends, uh, officials of the DPCDSB. Uh, we are, I am here at three certificates of appreciation. These certificates of appreciation uh, is our way of saying thank you to uh, the officials of uh, the Doug Green Peel Catholic District School Board uh, for accepting our request, graciously accepting our request uh, for uh, the art competition. And I will read now uh, uh, the citation of the certificate. Uh, this certificate of appreciation is presented to Ms. Sharon Hobin, Chair, Board of Trustees, 
Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board for supporting the Philippine Consulate General Spadayon paglika sa panahon ng Pandemia Art Competition with the theme Paghilom at Pag-asa Mula sa Pandemia or Healing and Hope from the Pandemic, a project of Centro Rizal Toronto in partnership with the Philippine National Com Commission for Culture and the Arts and in collaboration with the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board for the 2021 Quincentennial Commemorations of the Philippines held from 19 November 2020 to 16 February 2021. So uh, the Certificate of Appreciation is signed by the Chairman of the NCCA, the Honorable Arsenio Lisaso, uh, and uh, myself, uh, the Philippine Consul General in uh, Toronto. So this is the Certificate of uh, Appreciation to Chair uh, uh, Sharon Hobin of the DPCDSB. Uh, the same uh, certificates are also being given uh, to the two other officials of DPCDSB, uh, to uh, Vice Chair uh, Luz de Rosario of the Dapurim Peel uh, Catholic District School Board, uh, and also to Dr. Marian Mazorato, Director of Education. Maraming salamat at mabuhay po kayong lahat. I now have uh, the privilege of introducing to you for his uh, brief remarks, the Honorable Arsenio Lisaso, Chairman of the Philippine National Commission for Culture and the Arts and President of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Isang makasining na pagbati sa ating mga kababayan sa Canada as the Chairman of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, NCCA, the de facto Ministry of Culture in the Philippines. It gives me great pleasure to be celebrating with you today in the culmination of the Padayon Art Competition. The competition was organized by the Centro Rizal Toronto in partnership with Toronto and Dufrin Peel Catholic District School Board and with the support of the NCCA and with the support of NCCA. Padayon, the Visayan word for to move on or to carry on, expresses our firm commitment to inspire our kababayans around the world to move forward. Despite the challenges of COVID-19, yet moving on is useless without the heart and passion that drive us onwards. As the great French painter Henri Matisse puts it, creativity takes courage. With Padayon Art Competition, we hope that we are able to empower you to express your culture and identity as Filipinos through visual arts. As you brave the new normal, I am also pleased to know that you have marked for the first time this year the 2021 Quincentennial Commemorations in your adoptive land. This important occasion reminds us of our country's fight for freedom as we honor our ancestors' bravery. Let us also remember the humanity they showed before, the same humanity that our frontliners around the world champions today. At this point, I would like to thank Consul General Orontes Castro, the Philippine Consul General in Toronto, the dedicated team of Centro Rizal Toronto for their fervent support in promoting our country's culture and heritage 
to our kababayans in Canada. In closing, I encourage each one of you, all of you, to always keep the Philippines in your hearts. And from there, to continue creating works that inspire hope and healing for our nation. Congratulations to the winners. Thank you and padayon! We will now undertake the signing of the proclamation of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines by Chair Hoban, Philippine Council General Castro, Director Maserato, and Vice Chair Luz Del Rosario. I would like to call on Philippine Council General Castro to present the donation of two novels to the chair of the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, Ms. Sharon Hoban. I'm honored to present to the Honorable Chair Sharon Hobin and Vice Chair uh, Ms. Luz de Rosario and uh, Dr. Marianne uh, Mazarato, Director of Education of the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board, uh, the facsimile copies of the two novels of our national hero, Dr. Jose Pirisal, titled Noli Metangere. It's a Latin word, it means uh, touch me not. And El Filibusterismo, a Spanish word, means the filibuster. Uh, these two novels played an important role in the establishment of uh, the Philippine Republic, the first democratic republic in Asia. So uh, I am happy to present these two novels to DPCDSB in the own handwritten and writing of our national hero, Dr. Jose Pirisal. This is our way of saying thank you to the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board for partnering with us on the occasion of the historic quincentennial commemorations of the Philippines, the Padayon Art Competition. Thank you very much uh, to the board. Uh, in Filipino, we say maraming salamat po. Consul General Castro, we are humbled and honored to accept this beautiful gift on behalf of the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board. Thank you. Now, for the moment everyone is waiting for, Council General Castro and representing the judges of the art competition, Mr. Lopos, will announce the winners of the art competition. We will start with some consolation prizes immediately followed by the top winners. And now, uh, a special cash prize from Attorney Ryan from the Palace. Buy something, probably more artworks. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully that will inspire you to paint some more. Yeah. And participate in other events of the consulate. Oh, that's fantastic. And, uh, we hope to see you here. Yes. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> all right. Thank you all definitely okay. come for the The second recipient of the special prize winner 
uh, from the Philippine Consulate General in Toronto is a uh, student, Pilipa Lauren Ching Lee. Congratulations to you. The special prize winner uh, for elementary school category uh, will receive 100 uh, Canadian dollar from the Philippine Consulate General in Toronto is uh, Jason Raniero. <laughs> Jason will be accompanied also by his uh, brother Christopher and Sister Emily, because they also submitted uh, artwork entries. So they will receive certificates of participation. And because uh, we have three particip student participations from one family, uh, the mother and their mother and father, uh, John and Julie Raniero, will also be receiving a special uh, award, Certificate of Appreciation, signed by uh, myself, uh, by the Chairman of the Philippine National Sin uh, Cult uh, uh, Commission for Culture and the Arts, and the officials of the Dufferin Peel District School Board, uh, Chair uh, Sharon Hobin, uh, Vice Chair Luz de Rosario and Director of Education Marian Mazorato. Congratulations. Congratulations. Special prize winner. Uh, on the secondary school category uh, is Miss uh, Tehrim Fatima. May we call on uh, Miss Fatima to, co to come up uh, together with her family. Special prize winner, uh, secondary school category, Miss Natalie Ayub. Uh, she will be receiving $100 uh, Canadian dollar from the Philippine Consulate in Toronto. Uh, please come up, Miss uh, Natalie, and receive also your certificate of participation. Uh, also, the parents, please come forward. Special prize winner from the Philippine Consulate General in Toronto, secondary school category. We will receive Canadian dollar 100, Miss Jessica Grace uh, Thomas. May we call her to call uh, to come up to receive her certificate of participation and uh, the family, please.
The third place winner is a grade six student from St. Therese of the Child Jesus School, Valentina Annabel Herrera Osorio. I decided to paint a sunrise because no matter how difficult these times are due to the pandemic, God will always make the sun rise up for us and provide us with hope and healing during these hard times. The second place winner is a grade four student from Our Lady of Good Voyage School, Ava Steele Wonfat. My painting is named Making Amends. The world represents the heart. The cracks and the broken pieces on the heart is the pandemic. But the glue and band-aids that we put are the healing and hope from the pandemic. The first place winner is a grade 8 student from Sinclair School, Julian Balatayo. In my piece, the bottom captures the present. There's a boy in the hospital and the streets are bare and gloomy. A bright light from the window illuminates the room and the cross is above the patient to signify that God is always in our presence, even in tough times. The topic, the top is <laughs> the future or what we hope for. The crowd in the church emphasizes togetherness we can't heal and end the pandemic alone. God is evident there. In the last scene, we see families. Being with family heals our hearts. Having these memories gives us hope and motivation. The hands in the center with a glowing cross is God's goodness being given to you. Following God leads to learning the virtue of hope and being healed. Color is important. The bottom is muddy and the top is bright. It's acrylic paint. <laughs> so. The third place winner is a grade 10 student from St. Thomas Aquinas Secondary School, Ariel. Abuan Nito. In this art piece, I decided to portray the theme hope and healing during the pandemic through symbolism and color. I used warm colors within the puddle's reflection to represent a warm reality we hope for. 
then using cool colors everywhere else to symbolize how our reality right now feels like we're stuck in time. During the brainstorming process, I really wanted to include the symbolism of hope in an unrealistic manner. This is where the silhouette of the deer and grass growing in the middle of the street comes into mind. So after finding inspiration and images and a little research, I finalized the idea of the deer symbolizing hope. Overall, I created what I planned, and that was an unrealistic image of an empty city street symbolizing quarantine itself, along with the nature representation to symbolize hope and healing that are soon to come. The second place winner is a grade 12 student from St. Joseph Secondary School, Jenna Muli Jarden. Among the many things COVID has taken from us, this piece depicts one that is minor yet very much needed by the world right now, a hug. A hug that silently says, it's going to be okay. This is God's message to the world. As we fight this battle together, he never leaves our side. Although we cannot see him directly, he is with us in the form of other people, such as our healthcare workers, helping us overcome our challenges. They are the masked angels that save us from the dark, tumultuous clouds of suffering and hardship due to the pandemic that bring us to a, towards a higher, more colorful future. The sunset in the background serves as a reminder to all that no matter how long and hard the day may be, a new day will always arise. Hope is coming, just keep holding on. Congratulations again. And the first place winner is a grade nine student from St. Francis Xavier Secondary School, Jim Murray Hormilusa. to Hope is an acrylic and oil painting mounted on a 30 by 40 artist canvas. My painting illustrates a girl in a tradition fi traditional Filipiniana dress having an internal battle with two sides of her consciousness, despair, red, and hope, blue. Despair is represented through a part of her that looks somber. She wears a mask and looks out her window to see that the virus has spread throughout the world. Many people in quarantine feel like this almost as if there's no hope left. The thorns wrapped around her wrist represent the feelings and other problems one may have. That brings people's hopes down further. On the contrary, she is hopeful, smiling at a dove and holding a rosary with flowering plants around her. At this time, prayer is much needed as it brings us the hope and aspiration to move towards a better future. Thank you, everyone. And now I call upon Vice Chair Luz Del Rosario to present closing remarks. As we bring this presentation to a close, I would like to recognize the people that made this event happen. Thank you to the Chair of the Board and my fellow trustees of the Duffinfield Catholic District School Board for your support to the proclamation of the art competition. Thank you to our Director of Education, Marian Maserato, for her guidance in preparing the proclamation and assistance in this event. To our Associate Director, Daniel Del Bianco, and General Manager, Bruce Campbell, for working the logistics and approvals for this event. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you to Father Carlos Makataga, pastor at Cristo Rey Parish in Mississauga, 
for celebrating the Mass to commemorate the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines and doing our opening prayer for the proclamation and awarding program. To the hardworking staff of Philippine Consulate for accepting and organizing the entries of the art competition in preparation for the judges to review and select the winners, thank you. I know that some of you came in on weekends and on family day to ensure the last minute submissions were given a chance. Thank you for your time. To Consul General Orantes Castro, again, thank you for reaching out to Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board to be a partner in celebrating the cultural aspect of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines. Special thank you to Amrita Chopra, DPCDSB Communication and Community Engagement Specialist for recording this presentation. She is amazing. Thank you. Thank you to Kalayaan Center for hosting the awarding of the art competition. And thank you to the art competition judges, Justice Steve Carosa, Mr. Gennaro Lopez, and Dr. Helen Balderrama. Most especially, I would like to thank all the students, parents, and teachers who in one way or another participated in the art competition. Thank you for sharing your gift of time and talent. To all of you watching this event at home in Canada and those around the world, thank you for being part of the Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board's proclamation of the 500th anniversary of Christianity in the Philippines and the awarding of the winners of the art competition. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong panonood. This now concludes our presentation. Thank you.